today we've been talking about uh, theater practice in Rwanda and linkage to mental health. Theater is uh, a part of uh, a big umbrella which is art. Each of our panelists will bring different experience and expertise. Help me to welcome on the stage Ferdinand Zero, a poet, a career advisor, founder of Voice of Generation Rwanda. Moses Isa a visual artist and the founder of Google, Google Art Space. Welcome to the stage. And last not least, Erika Kawanda, the program manager of Dabaka Impact. Welcome to the stage. As we said, today is about theater practice in Rwanda and the linkage to mental health. To start our conversation, we would like to hear from Mr. Ferdinand about what is art in Rwanda and what are some categories in Rwanda to have that picture. Thank you very much, Mr. Silvestre. As you mentioned, my name is Ferdinand Munezero, and uh, I started uh, my journey of art uh, started in tw um, 2002 when I was at high school. So if I define art in Rwanda, let me tell you that to me the definition of art, art is life. And I can confirm that through two words, because even God creating us, he gave us heart. And if you analyze heart, Inside heart, we have art. And if we remove art, heart will no longer be. If we also talk about art, is, there is art inside, which means that art is life. Art is not music, art is not poetry, art is not film, art is life. In Rwanda, you are very lucky today because when we started the journey of art, art was something that is there just to help people to enjoy. Art was just there as something that is needed at the last. If someone needs to have fun, was using art. If someone needs to enjoy, was using the artist. Which means that the artists in Rwanda were not valuable. Therefore, today, we are very lucky because art is now valuable and the artists are gaining something from the art activities. And from there, we find that in Rwanda, we need to take art as a sector and not only a sector, but also an industry that can create opportunities, that can create jobs, that can empower people and people really from the arts. From there, the government took art as the 16th sector that is contributing to the GDP of the country and also that is uh, helping people to make business. From there, we came up with an idea of creating what we call Rwanda Art Council that is going to host all types of art so that we can also bring the forces and the voice together and we come up with something that can contribute. From there we have now seven federations in art in Rwanda. There is what we call performing art. We are the Zandolasen. Performing art is uh, like we have poetry, we have music. Actually in general they say MDD, music, dance and drama. That's performing art. Then, that's the first federation. We have also beauty and fashion designing. That is accommodating the beauty, that is also uh, accommodating the fashion designers, and also include models, because if we create something that is like props, we need people to show this. The second one, and then we have uh, dance, traditional dance federation in Rwanda, which also bring up like dancers in Rwanda, so that we can also have the center we can have culture as the center of the, our, our days. Then we have also uh, Writers Federation, we have also Plastic Art Federation, and we have also Film Industry, which is also a particular federation. Those are the seven federations we have in art in Rwanda. 
So in summary, you need to know at, at categories, you have to go through those seven federations. And if you to work professionally, you will need also to work those kind of federations, even though you are maybe outside of the federation, but you need to locate you each of those seven types of art just I mentioned. Thank you. Wow. Oh, wow. So in the performing arts federation, which is one of the activities we have tonight, the Rwanda Theatre Festival. I'd like to hear from Erika. What is the role of theatre in Rwanda society? You can share some experience from the Rwanda Theatre Festival and use them. Yes, so, uh, thank you so much. Uh, first, I'm going to thank you for inviting us. It's, uh, we're happy to be here as Dawaga. So, the role of theatre, especially in the Rwanda society, I can say it's like a vessel of expressing that voice, the voice of the youth, the voice of impact, and the voice of something that we want to see in the society. At a certain point, there are things which we cannot express in a speech. We cannot express maybe uh, by playing football or something else, but when you hold the mic, you write a poem, or maybe when you hold the mic, you're performing a certain piece of art, there's a certain way that you express that inner voice in you. And not everyone in this society is going to become like a politician, to have that spotlight and express certain policy or something. But when you have that platform where you can say something that you believe in, especially if there's a message that maybe you want to give to the society, you can maybe pass through the theater piece of art. And especially to Ndavaga, we use it as our third approach. We normally have three approaches. One is intergenerational dialogues. And the second one is raising the researching skills in the youth. And the third one is arts and theater. In that process, we just let everyone, whoever knows how to write, whoever knows how to dance, play, or any single thing that we see as a gift, we give it a space where you can express it. Because we never know the value of a person. We might be seated here, but we don't know each and everyone's value in terms of what they think, in terms of what they believe in, or something that they can contribute to a certain thing, a current certain thing which is happening. So we just give them a space and say, this and this is happening. How can you create a certain piece out of it? And you are amazed with what comes out of it. So itself, the world of theatre is just expressing that voice. I can tell most of us here, the youth, I bet there are some of the movies we used to see back in the days and we try to imitate what we see in the movies. Like now, oh, some of them would jump on the fences and they would be like, I'm going to fly. Others would be like, I'm going to... Like, I don't know different kinds of things. There's a certain way that movies speak to us. Or maybe what we see, they speak to us. So that voice which comes out of this theater, there's this kind of song they were singing, come to me, so come to me, whatever you have been going through, I'm providing a certain solution to you. Someone who's seated there, that would be like a voice talking to him. In a certain way, there's an impact you're making in someone's life unknowingly. So that's the impact that theater has in the random society, especially coming from the youth, because that the youth has a certain of imagining things with no limits. Because if you look at a uh, different level, perspective people have a certain way of putting so much logic, mathematics, we do this in one we do that in one but with arts there's no limit. You just go beyond everything, you just make it happen, you just bring it out. Some people do like that's crazy, but at a certain point for you you believe in it and you never know when you speak it. Yeah, thank you. Wow. Wow. Um now we know what is art and what is the performing art. Uh, Ferdinand, you can take us uh, through the journey of performing arts in the maybe past five years and be, how do you see performing arts maybe in the next five years? Uh, so, it's very hard to talk about that journey in the previous five years because performing arts has made me somewhat different. I remember in 20, in 2003, I was about to drop from the school. I was not able to pay my school fees. My father was not working. 
my mother was not working. I didn't have any family member that could support me to go back to school. And I was sitting, I remember, under the tree next to our house, asking myself if my brain is too empty so that my life is stopped from them. Then a spirit came in my mind that tell, told me that you can do something. From there, I started the poetry. And I was teaching the young people that was well, around me in the village. But performing that could not provide anything because, you know, like in those years, you were something like, I won like four times a national prize of being the first poet in Rwanda. But what was the prize? 30,000. 30,000. It's too small. Nowadays, you can even get like 1 million, like 500. But those days, imagine to have a competition from the cell, center, district, province, and on national level, 30,000. It was very hard. Then from there, when I started doing poetry, I had many people with good hearts who came to me and paid my school fees. Actually, I started on a school and on a scholarship of art from senior three up to university. People paying because I was a poet. And sometimes people ask me, you are a poet, you are saying you are a poet, but you don't see your poems in YouTube or everywhere. I have been a poet behind the scene. And I know that I have met people who passed it into my hand just because I was trying to raise many people with me. And the performing art, though in those days, was very hard, very hard, because even in the schools, it was not there. But later on, people started like organizing some competitions. Like, but the, the performing art was not a tool for changing people. It was a tool for competition. Where they give you a topic, you make a poem. After the competition, they give you money until that is the end of the story. A poem is in the in somewhere on the city, or maybe it can be disqualified somewhere, and it is no longer needed. That was very bad to the industry. So later on, people saw that through poetry, through something that is performance, like music, dance. I remember in 2005, we went we went to a first festival that was organized by Power One. That was bringing young people from different schools around the country so that they can express themselves by through prayers but by using dance. Then from there, some different stakeholders and policymakers started to see that art, performing art, can also bring changes in young people and also can contribute to the positive change of the society. Then it, it went like that, and people enjoying it. Many people came, new people came into industry, and then the industry grew grown up to now. So I can say that it was a long journey and there were no studio for poetry. There were no, no kind, no particular stages. Poetry was left behind, theater was left behind, only in the whole days, just to make the young people busy. But nowadays, it has become like something uh, like tangible that can contribute to the society. So, like five years ago, Performing art was not something that is considered as the center of something. But nowadays, with the federations, with you guys who are doing like a very big progress, so we can now say performing art now is now starting to rise up and everyone is enjoying it, not as to enjoy, but also as a sector. What I see as performing art in the future, I see it as a sector, I see it as an industry, I see it as something that can create opportunities, that can make, help people to make lives. Because we are making lives up out of that. Like when you, you talk, you, you say that I'm the, the founder of Voice of the Nation, let me talk a little bit about it. I found that in the rural area, you're very lucky in Kigali. I'm someone from the village in Yamagari. I don't stay in Kigali. I enjoy staying in the village because that's where my inspiration is. And that's where my young people, my generation is. So I saw that in the young people at high school, they have so many talents. But afterwards, after finishing the school, the talent disappeared. 
Then from there, I started what I call voice of generation. By using art as a voice to advocate for young people who are talented and maybe creating opportunities through those times. We are doing that in Yamagare, Yaluguru, Huye, and Sagara by bringing young people to talk about what they can do out of what they know and what they have as talent. Which means that performing art is also one of our programs. So, the performing art is making changes, so we are also using those, those young people to think out of the box and also using their talent through performing art. So by performing, by bringing what they know on the stage, by performing them, then the, the young people can also express themselves. Which means that it will be a very big contribution in the future, and as a voice of the nation, we are ready and we are engaged to take part of that journey to bring performing art at the top of the art. So I think that's it, and maybe if you need more, I will contribute. Thank you. Wow. You know, as, I, as everyone here can feel, it was a long journey of the performing arts. Uh, now we're talking about uh, youth using their talents. Mr. Moses, how does the technology and the social media uh, make impact to the arts in general? And which this we can learn from the nineteen. Uh, thank you so much. Um, yeah, as introducing me, my name is Moses Cesare Giza, um, founder of Ura Space. Um, for me, like when you see that nowadays we are in the modern world, everything is technology. So um, I remember last year. Because of COVID, because of pandemic, like every artist was struggling, like, was struggling. Like, some of them they end up getting uh, be depressed. Um, even me myself, I'm talking like, like I'm projecting that, but I started for myself. Um, I was so depressed, and then uh, I was like, how am I going to make money? Then? As you know, 2020, everyone was thinking like everything is going to be good, like there's many events that's, that is going to happen. I have like uh, a long plan for 2020. But um, when I was traveling, how I can make money? Because most of the time we're organizing the exhibitions, like painting, uh, street art videos, set design and theater. But um, we sit down and me and my team go around space and see how are we going to make money. So we come up with this uh, potential idea of starting organizing a virtual exhibition, the exhibition online. So it's an exhibition that we we invite all artists from Rwanda, young artists, also the other artists. So we. The topic was about to, like, what have you been doing in lockdown? Like, let's just bring those artworks like you've been creating. You want to see like, how he was thinking, how he was, you know, uh, frustrated with what's happening. Like, you want to see how he yeah, was express, expressing himself. Uh, we organized that exhibition. It was a very, very good exhibition. And it was happening on, uh, we shared on our social media, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and also on our website. So, yeah, that time, like, everything back to normal, that's where it was, before it was like a um, negative thing, but instead of uh, sitting back and, you know, complaining, we just find a solution, like, how are we going to survive in this situation? Because we can't change anything, we just have to be creative and come up with something good. Not only going to benefit for us, also going to benefit for our other fellow artists, our colleagues. So it was very successful exhibition, and um, it's also opened our eye and our mind like, to break the barriers around us and then to find solutions in the middle of our bad situation. Yeah, for me, I can say like nowadays, like social media is everything. Like sometimes I can sell my artwork on Instagram, Facebook. 
Wow, uh, thank you for the great experience. And now, uh, back a little bit on the performing arts, uh, Mr. Fenton, uh, what is the biggest challenge for the performing arts in Rwanda? Now we heard about the performing arts, the journey, but now when you see what is the biggest that you see the one that handles the performing arts. So, so um, we have so many challenges, not only in performing arts, but in art in general. The challenges that I'm mentioning is not only for performing arts, it's, uh, they, also, they are also applied on uh, other sectors of art. The first challenge is um, the level of paying professional. For us artists, we are so called, everyone is calling himself or herself an artist. But are we? That is the question. Everyone is waking up in the morning, I'm an artist. So we have also to go back in ourselves and ask ourselves if really we are artists. Because if you, un if you understand artists in the perspective of art, you have to be someone different. You need to be creative. You need to bring something new. Because art in Kiyawana, they say, Buhanga. You need to create. You need to come up with something different. So we are having a challenge of being professional. Because if you go in Rwanda, we don't have even like institutions that are certifying people to be professional. I give you like a funny example, it's like funny. We had a department of drama at the University of Rwanda, but now it's closed. That's a very big challenge for the performing arts sector. Because like the institution which was in place to professionalize people is no longer there. If you need to become a professional artist, I don't think we have so much or so many institutions that can help you to be professional. So we have also few discussions. We always, we're always going to the show, like performing, we have to sing, we have to do everything. We are doing the show. But we don't conduct any kind of workshop that tells people how to be professional. Which means professionalism is a challenge for us and for the sector. The second challenge is an investment. I think it's not a secret. We are now having the Wanda Theatre Festival. The investment came from Africa. It, it will be very hard to see an institution that is engaged in investing in Rwanda for the theatre. So we are having now, uh, we don't have much investment. It's a big challenge because if you don't invest money into something, then that thing is, doesn't work. So investment is a challenge. It's a very big challenge. We have two kinds of investment. One is money. The second one, even as artists, we don't invest. We don't invest in the time we have. We just, not everyone, but we seem to be lazy. We don't invest much time to make this profession. The third one is mindset. There is a big uh, negative mindset around the art. Because if you pronounce yourself I'm an artist, some people would think you are invisible. That mindset goes to the audience and also to come, it, it also goes back to us because there is a misperception or maybe a misunderstanding that someone, if you are an artist, you need maybe to drink alcohol, you need to take like drugs so that you can be powerful. It's also a mindset. I have been, I had a chance to go to South Korea for eight months to study about international cultural exchange through traditional music. I got a chance to participate in more than 11 international festivals. Those festivals were accommodating performing arts like music, drama, dance, and also uh, they were like painting, plastic art. I met so different professional artists around the world. We are about like 72 countries from around the world, and Rwanda was the only country that was presenting the performing arts. So I met different people, but those people that I met, none is taking 
alcohol and drugs to be powerful message. So for us, we have that mindset that we need to inject something into us so that we can become a performer, which is not good. So that is also like a very big mindset. It's, there's a mindset for audience. There's also another mindset for us artists. So if we tackle on those three main challenges, professionalism, investment, and mindset, then we're good to go, and we'll be making a lot of money, and we'll make progress and change in our lives. Thank you. Oh, wow. Well, those challenges are really challenges. <laughs> now talking about those challenges, uh, Erika, uh, which way can we uh, make a substantial change in the performing arts in Rwanda, considering how your experience and how you see the industry in general? Well, uh, stop saying about experience, though. You, you have experience. <laughs> a journey of learning but uh, I think number one is just creating something which is impactful not just doing it for the sake of earning money because when you do something because you want to earn money you will end up losing it because you want to do something to please Pamela and yet you, you actually lose the originality of your work itself so instead of just working some working on something it is painting, if it is a song, if it is a piece of art like theatre itself, any kind of uh, art it could be, doing it not to please the people that you are targeting, but rather making that originality come out of you in an original way. So making something impactful and not also uh, delivering a negative message because at a certain point I don't think it's going to deliver a certain um, good message because at a certain point people won't either buy a thing or maybe understand it in a certain way. You also have to bring out something which won't make people question um, your integrity, people question who you are, people question all those kind of stuff. But rather bring something which people will see and be like, wow, instead of just um, asking themselves a lot of questions. Uh, number two, it's going to be working together as artists. And not just things like, uh, I am Erica, I'm going to work on my own, I'm going to, you know, I'll, I'll just rise myself, that's all. Whoever is coming behind me, you know what, just do it yourself, I will hustle myself. I don't I don't want to work with anyone else, because at the end of the day, no man is behind me. We all know that. So we all need like a hand, we need to learn from people, we need to, you know, we just share experience. Because at a certain point, we don't know everything, and we also need to, have more knowledge about what we're doing. And the third one, it's actually linked to that one of working together, is always sharpening ourselves in that specific thing you're doing. If you are a poet, you do it so well, but that's not the end line of it. How can you be better? Because at the end of the day, when you do something, you come here, you perform, people are cheering up, yes, you're doing it so well, you feel like that's all, but you can do better, better than that. What you did last year in 2020, you can even do better in 2021. What about 2022? You're still going to be here on stage. So people need to see more. We need to see that uh, art coming out of you, all that message coming out of you, original, and always, uh, he said about something, Buhanga. It always has to be new, make it new every single day. So learn every day and make sure you're making a new content of what you're actually creating and make sure that you're working with yeah. Wow. So one thing with consistency. Yes. Uh, now, Mr. Moses, you talked about um, the experience you had during the COVID-19, the mental health issues, and uh, from your experience, how does and how can an artist use this art as a tool for mental health? Um, that's a good question. Because, yeah, um, uh, for me, I believe like artists tell us. And um, let me say, like, before uh, when I started to do art, I was thinking like artists finish sitting in front of canvas, creating something. I was thinking like, that's the end of art. That's how to be an artist. But 
um, and also our thinking is also to, uh, to create a pretty big picture. But the more I grow, the more I'm, I'm curious to learn more about that. Um, yeah, because I'm saved, I just, every day I'm learning. <laughs> Yeah, um, and the, um, we don't have barriers to make any other um, um, piece of paper art in me. So, um, I found out art is connected to the life. It's connected to the life. And to, to be an artist it doesn't end when you just perform here. You know, it's like how you be, how you go, how you go, how you live everyday life. Yeah, it doesn't just finish on the stage, it doesn't finish on the canvas. Um, for me, I found out also like the process when you are creating a uh, or when you are writing or, or when you are writing a book or when you are writing a, a script. That's the process. That's the therapy. That's the, the, the way of therapy. Um, it's a therapy physically because when you are creating, when you or when you are engaging yourself in uh, something creative, um, you feel the less pain. You know, you feel good, you feel the less pain. And the second thing is mentally. You challenge yourself. For example, um, for me, I can even spend one month working on one part. Uh, because I have something in my mind that, that I want to express and maybe installation, maybe set design, maybe on the canvas. So every time I look at it, then I challenge my mind to come with something. Um, I challenge my mind like how can I just take what I have in my mind that's um, a creation that I'm working on. So it's it's good. And that's why uh, that process also it's help you like mentally also to think and also to release that negative from your brain because you are using your brain focusing on something. Yeah. And also I can say emotionally, like imagine when you, for example, you've been thinking about this project, this festival, and now how exactly was thinking. Of course there is a challenge, but at least like when you sit and bug, you're going to say like at least 80% I have achieved what I was dreaming and, and it's there on the ground. You know, emotionally you feel happy, you feel like uh, self-confidence, you know. So um, those process just, that's where like for me that's the therapy. So um, it's always started from and because you can give what you don't have. It's always, um, we all struggling with depression because uh, it's like, it's a concept of good thing, but you know, it's not always, you're not always happy, you know, sometimes you, you get mad, you know. Uh, so for me, uh, that's why I started to show in my art, like, when I created my artwork, I just want audience and the people to engage with my album, to have that conversation Because sometimes you are creating something and it's something come from you, your feelings, but you, in your canvas, in your poem or in your music, you're talking about someone else. They are out there, who been struggling with the depression, those mental disorder. So that's why when I'm creating this for the audience to um, engage with my artwork, to feel that process, how I was feeling, you know, and see themselves in, in, in my artwork. So um, for me, I think art is it's life, as uh, Ferdinand mentioned. Um, for me, without art, I don't know where I become. I don't. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, what I can say, the message after this is just like if you are there, like try to create a room for someone else out there. Try to be in their shoes, feel them, just uh, 
because it's not easy just to it's not easy to say something or to do something without offending others. But it's the way that we can try like, to create that room in yourself, feel the pain of someone is, instead of you know complaining of someone, just go close to him or her, talk to him, or, you know, talk to her, you know, or try to help him or her to find something like uh, they can something they can do to release that pain. Like sometimes you can use the word to help them, or sometimes you can use art, you can use any activity of creation. Yeah. Uh, for me, thank you so much. Uh, that's what I think. Well, thank you for that great experience. Um, now, Fedna, come here. I'd like to ask you, uh, what are the common misconceptions that the society or artists and what can artists do or what can the society do to take back or to resolve those misconceptions? So, concept, misconceptions, there are, so, there are a lot of misconceptions. Um, I like this guy called uh, Amadi de Blanc. Once, a couple of times, I told him, can we do our conversation in English? He said, yes, you can. So what, what can you tell people in English? He said, bye-bye, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> so, I like that reaction, because if we go into a misconception about allowing that there's so many, we can even sense them. I like someone, there's a, poet, there's a black poet that I like from America. He said, education is not filling my head with the questions and dead, and dead that I can end up by forgetting them tomorrow at the exams. Education is about inspiring my mind. So, art is there and it has its own definition that is clear for everyone. Art is life. Education is education and you cannot bring any definition education is education. But allow that because people need to take advantage from art by using it as a tool for their personal advantages, not for the common good cause that the art has been created. That's why you can find so many different negative concepts. Many positive also they are there. But if you come to negative con mis misconcepts, we have so many. This concept of saying that always an artist is someone who is a discipline, it's, it's a concept that I don't know who invented it, but it's a concept which is negative. So we artists, it's an example that I took. We artists, we need to prove them wrong. That it is not like that. By doing what? By creating something that is valuable to the society. We need to take part of the change that the country needs. In a positive way, of course. So that you can avoid those misconceptions that is maybe bringing other conceptions around the arts. As you said, art is a concept of positive change and mental health. As he mentioned, you know, like in Rwanda, I like the story of Rwanda because, like, before art was everywhere. Like, when you go to the farm digging, people were singing. When you go to, to see, like, cows, people were singing. Someone is doing something, they are singing because art was around there and art was helping people to enjoy. If someone needs to talk about their dreams, I know. Thank you.
to the sea, but it's now tonight, if I'm told, it becomes a wax. So um, the concept, we need to bring, like that concept, it was a good concept because it was a concept to explain what is inner, talking about what is inside. So we need to bring those positive concepts. As I mentioned also, we have like this concept that we artists, we invent. That is not like raising up us, ourselves, but also we create some concepts around us that is, as I mentioned, because maybe I'm going to repeat it, but we have this concept that is saying that you need to be drunk to be on stage. It's a concept. But does it contribute? Maybe no, I don't know. Maybe no, maybe yes. But we need to dig deeper and to see if this concept can bring something positive. 